Jonathan Meyer, and we are looking at the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Times Gospel Passage, which this week is Mark chapter 9, 38 through 43, and then 47 through 48. I'd like to actually speak about a pretty uh, important topic, and that's called protecting children. Clearly, um, since the outbreak of the Boston Globe uh, report on the sexual misconduct of clergy, uh, the protection of children is something that the Catholic Church has begun to take seri- very seriously. And I think it's always very, this, like, this is a, a topic that we should talk about and we should be comfortable talking about. So the reality is, is that there are some priests who have hurt children. And there are some bishops who have covered that up. Now, it is not all priests and it's not all bishops, but the reality is, is that there are some priests who have hurt children. And that is terrible. And that is a crime. And although we should pray for mercy on their souls, they should be treated justly. Just as there are fathers and uncles and teachers and counselors who have hurt children. And out of justice, they should be treated accordingly. A priest and a bishop all the more, because of their role as being an image of Christ, the hurt that they cause in the lives of individuals is much worse than the hurt and the pain that's caused, I believe, by fathers or uncles or cousins or teachers or counselors. That's just my personal belief. But I think that the role of a priest and the role of a bishop and the hurt that they cause is astronomical. Now, I think we can say that the church is doing a lot to try to protect children. I can tell you that at my parish, we do all that we can to follow every rule and guideline given to us to protect our children. Why? Because children deserve it. Because they're God's children. Jesus also clearly says in our gospel passage today, in Mark chapter 9, what happens to children that are not protected. That those who harm children should literally suffer a horrible death. It would be better for them that a millstone be tied around their neck and they'd be thrown into the sea. So Jesus was very, very harsh in those who hurt children. Now, I can honestly tell you that like, my life as a priest, like working within the church, and I mean this, like I was ordained in the year 2003, the, 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 the introduction of the priest scandal had already hit. I received training in seminary. I have done everything I possibly have could throughout my priesthood to just like always do what I can to protect children and to make sure that I'm not alone with kids, to make sure that people have background checks, to make sure that we're doing all that we can to like create safe environments for our young people. And I will tell you that like that's not the case everywhere else. Like I can tell you like working out society in the world and being involved as a cross country coach at public schools and seeing how young people are treated in in other environments The church really does a great job. I truly believe that the Catholic Church is a very safe place for children. But that hasn't always been the case. And for that, we should do penance and do reparation. And my very dear friend, Father Hollowell, as for many of you know him from following our YouTube channel here, like, no, there's penance and reparation that is due for the crimes that have been done to the children of of our church. But I truly do believe that we also have to, like, be able to say, you want to know what? The church is a very safe place. And thanks be to God for that. But I also want to encourage you to make sure that you are always doing what you can to be an advocate of safety for our children. Part of creating a safe environment for our children is that everyone in the church plays their role to make sure that we're looking out for those precious gems and gifts that God has given to us and that we should take that seriously. So I wanna encourage you in, the, in this video, and I know I normally we just do a gospel reflection, but the topic is in here this week, and I don't want it to go by without saying what I think is so important, that what has happened in times past is an atrocity, a crime, and horrible. But I truly believe that there is a path that we are moving on, and it's a really, really good path, and that we need to keep going down that road. And that's hopeful. That's that should bring us, like, not pride in, a, in an evil sense, but, like, 
We should be able to hold our heads. You want to know what? We're doing a lot to protect kids. Thanks be to God. I think that's, a, that's something for us to actually be like, you want to know what? Thanks be to God. So, some other reflection questions. What's the good news in today's gospel? In what way can you relate to this passage? What do we call someone who drives out demons within the church? The gospel passage says, for whoever is not against us is for us. How is this seen in our society and our world today? Jesus is very strong in his protection of children. How is the church still protecting and helping children even today? Does Jesus really want us to cut off our hands? If not, what does he mean by today's gospel passage? And lastly, what is Gehenna or where is Gehenna? Hopefully these questions will help you to enter deeply into this week's passages and to live them to the full. Through God's grace, may it be so.